It's time to goal check. And I'm not talking about hockey. A donut chicken sandwich. Yes, please. And apparently I'm one of the few who would not move into a haunted house. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello and welcome to a Friday. It is a freezing Friday here at the Jersey Shore. February 21st, 2020. It is day 161 of Gotta Get On Ellen. Yeah, we're in like the teens with the wind chill here this morning. But we are preparing for a mild weekend, which is good news, right? Going to hit, I think, mid-50s tomorrow and a little bit higher even for Sunday. And sunshine. Oh, I'll take it. I will take it. So this was a short week for a lot of people, but yet it felt like a long week. I don't really get holidays off anymore, so it really didn't feel like a short week to me. Hopefully it did for you. But I have to uh, get prepared to head out into the cold, hit the grocery store. I'm trying to be that exceptional wife again. I don't know why I was thinking trying to be an exceptional wife. Joe and I often will shop together on a Saturday morning, but he's been working really hard this week. He's been working a lot of overtime, working 12-hour days, and I am sure he is exhausted. And Tucker and I really appreciate all the hard work he's doing for his favorite girls in the world. So let's have a round of applause for my man, Joe. Just for you, Joe. We thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. And we're going to do the grocery shopping for you. Well, Tucker's not. He's just going to lay around as usual. So I will get the grocery shopping done and out of the way. I may treat myself with a fresh bagel this morning. I've been thinking about it all week because when I come back from the gym, I pass the bagel shop. And I'm always like, you know, I could just stop in there real quick and get a bagel. But, you know, I haven't. I've been very good. Staying on plan. I really, you know, wish that the scale would move a little bit, but I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on how I feel, and I feel good. I feel good. Speaking of not staying on plan, this is a doozy. KFC has announced a new donut chicken sandwich. That's right. It's going to be in stores on Monday. I don't know if it's going to be in all locations. So, you know, don't get mad at me if you show up at KFC on Monday and they don't have it there. They didn't say that it was in only particular locations, so I'm assuming it's everywhere. But it's a fried chicken sandwich, crispy chicken sandwich, on two hot glazed donuts. Obviously, they're using it as a bun. Looks a lot like a Krispy Kreme donut. I'm sure they're not the name brand Krispy Kreme donut, or else they would be using the name Krispy Kreme donut. I don't know if they're making their own or getting them from somewhere else, but this is something I can get behind. I think I would enjoy this. I think it would be messy and sticky and delicious. I'm sorry. I think most foods that are delicious make a mess. Ribs, overstuffed jelly donuts, or cream donuts, ice cream, dripping down the cone. Yeah, bring it on. I'm not running out on Monday to try the sandwich, but if it sticks around, I will check it out at some point. It's not that far off from chicken and waffles, right? People love the chicken and waffles. I love some sweet. And I love a little salty with my sweet. 
So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. So if that's something you're interested in, Monday in KFC stores, uh, restaurants, excuse me, the I'm sure they're calling it the crispy donut sandwich because we don't we don't want to say fried anymore. Because if we use the word crispy instead of fried, we're fooled into thinking that it's not really fried. It works for me, right? Yeah, not so much. I had my book club last night. We had a discussion of The Alchemist. If you recall, a few weeks back, I had done a couple of topics based on The Alchemist. It was so interesting to have a discussion about this book because... You know, other people have completely different interpretations of certain meanings throughout the book. I mean, like completely opposite of what you thought. And you're almost like, how could you think that? And then there's other times you're like, oh my gosh, I never even considered that. So it was a very cool discussion. Uh, A lot of personal stuff came out uh, in this discussion because that's just what tends to happen when you're reading a book such as this. If you have not read it, I highly recommend it. The Alchemist, uh, Paulo Coelho, I'm not really sure, but um, it's a pretty popular book. This book's right up my alley. It's a, it's a book that I thoroughly enjoyed. It, it resonated with me. It hit me right where... Um, I am in my own path of my own journey, and basically the book is about a shepherd boy who goes in search of his own treasure, which I use as, you know, just basically your goal in life. So, if you are looking to read something a little uplifting, empowering, and something that will... Make you realize that either you're on the right track or on the wrong track, which kind of goes with today's blog post about our gold checks. While we were discussing The Al- the Alchemist, another book came up that I haven't thought of in a long time, but I love, love, love. And if you don't like The Alchemist, I am almost positive you will love the Last Lecture by Randy Palsh, 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 something like that. I am not good with names today. I got Randy, but he was a um, professor at Carnegie Mellon University in, I believe that's in Pittsburgh, uh, and he just wrote the most amazing book about not – dwindling your life away, about living life to the fullest, about going after everything and anything that you want. In this book, it's funny, he talks about, um, you know, just things you should do throughout your life. And one of them is to win a huge stuffed animal while at an amusement park. And it's funny that he brought that up because I actually had the opportunity to do that. It was a huge teddy bear We were at Hershey Park, and I was just on a mission to get, like, the biggest bear that I could. And it started out with one of those games where, you know, you won a prize, and then you could trade up and trade up, and you could keep trading up. And then the next thing I knew, everybody I was with was trading up for me. And I'm like, you're, like, going to trade up for me so I can take the bear home? They're like, yeah, I don't care. I don't need a bear like that in my house. So I was very touched by that, by the way. And then um, we finally got the bear. And as he describes in the book, you are like a rock star when you are carrying around a huge stuffed animal at an amusement park. People like want to talk to you. They want to touch the bear. They want to be like, yeah, way to go. Like you're like this huge rock star. It was a really cool experience. And I'm so glad that I got to experience it. So if you ever have the opportunity... I never thought I'd be able to win something like that. And that's why it's kind of cool, I guess, and why people react the way that they do is because it seems so impossible to get one of those big bad boys. And it's, you know, it's exciting when you see somebody who does. We put a lot of work and a lot of money into it. 
I'm sure there was a lot of money that we spent. It was a long time ago. I kept that bear for years. Went from one house to me, with me to another house to me, to another house with me, and I finally gave him away. I named him Snavely after Hershey, uh, Will, uh, Milton Snavely Hershey, who, of course, Hershey Park is named after. Uh, somehow we got into a discussion with my girlfriend who happened to know that Milton Hershey's middle name was Snavely. And I said, how do you even remember a name like Snavely? And she said, how do you forget a name like Snavely? (laughs) I said, you know, that's a good point. So then hence, Snavely was born. And Snavely was a nice companion for me for some time. And I believe I did end up giving him to a girl that I worked with who was having a brand new baby niece come into her life. And I gave him to her for the baby niece. So I don't know what has become. I don't know what has become of Snavely. But I, I'd like to think he's still around bringing joy to someone, kind of like in Toy Story, right? But the discussion of The Alchemist and The Last Lecture, two books that I highly recommend. Uh, you know, The Alchemist is one of those books. It's not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, if you stick with it, though, I think that the message at the end is really, really good. But this is another one of those situations where I believe you have to be open and ready to receive the message. And maybe people who are not enjoying the book are just not at that place in their life where they're ready to receive their message. Just something, you know, I'm throwing out there. Could be wrong. Could be right. But uh, I found it to be a great message. Just got a text from my hubby. We're talking about coupons because he knows I'm going grocery shopping. Oh, we got a coupon for Chunky, Chunky Soup. Um, So I will go on to the topic. You don't want to hear about my grocery list. Or do you want to hear about my grocery list? Romaine lettuce, two packages for $4 this week. Bargain, which is always great because I buy it every week regardless of the price. So when it's on sale, it's like so exciting. Oh, the things we get excited about when we get older. Just too much for me. So I wanted to hear from you about haunted houses. Would you buy a house that is known to be haunted? What if it was significantly less money than most houses in the area? Me? No way, Jose. Wouldn't do it. We even had a ghost growing up in the house that I was raised in. My mom claims that she had seen him once in the hallway. He apparently passed away in the house in the master bedroom. And my mom claimed to have seen him one time in the hallway. And he used to just make noises. Like we would hear it sounded like somebody was walking around in the attic. Uh, Just little noises here and there. And then we moved when I was 13 from one house in the area to another house in the area. And about a year after we moved to the new house, we started hearing the very same sounds. And somebody had told us once that... The ghost may not have liked the new family and may have searched for us, and it might have taken a year to find us. Now, we didn't, he didn't stick around for long. I guess he didn't like the new house. I'm not sure, but we heard noises and stuff again for a short while, and then they stopped. So, you know, I kind of believe in this stuff. Um, it, it was nothing that was ever scary to me. I don't I don't think. I don't think I was ever really scared of it. When I moved into the condo uh, that I purchased, and still, every single picture I have taken in that house had orbs everywhere. Orbs everywhere in these pictures. And it was in a really old part of town, uh, right behind an old hotel that burned down. I don't think anybody died in it. I think it had been closed for some time when that happened, but yeah, just orbs everywhere in all of the pictures. You know, I should look at some of the pictures in this house and see if there are any orbs. I've never noticed any. I mean, they were so prominent in these pictures from my condo. I mean, you just, you couldn't miss them. I live in a fairly new development 
There's probably not a lot of death and destruction that took place in this area. 